I would now like to introduce our singer-songwriter for this morning, and that is Katie Frasinelli. Katie comes from Holliston, Massachusetts. She grew up in Huntington Valley, Pennsylvania, and I love the line she wrote, she played outside until the street lights came on. Later, living in Berkeley, California, she participated in and was a founding member of the Shotgun Players. She went to business school and then went on to study theater, where she acted and directed and developed new plays. And while she was also involved in temp work, this work launched her into a career of risk management, and she now has her own business with two partners in California. And she also married her, uh, her husband, sculptor, Michael Frasinelli. And then there were two twins and their arrival. And Katie noted that theater rehearsals were not conducive to twins. Um, and so she said music was a great way to feed her artistic need. And so she started writing songs and was hooked. And Katie says, a phrase or snippet of melody comes to me, and then the song takes shape. It's pretty amazing. And I'm always sure that the song I just wrote will be the last one until another one appears. She's been performing with the band Red Pony and as a solo singer-songwriter, and she just finished recording her first CD with Steve Rapson, who is accompanying her today. One of her songs on this CD was written by her great-great-uncle, Ridgely Torrance. He was a poet and a playwright, and he was a poetry editor of The New P Republic, published, and he published the early work of new poets such as Wallace Stevens, Louise Bagan, Alan Tate, and Hart Crane, as well as his good friend, Robert Frost. Uncle Torrance wrote the poem Evensong that Katie's great aunt asked to have set to music by Katie for her dying wish, except she still is living. But Katie went on to do that work. And when asked to tell a little bit more about it, Katie said, it's about how, when our lives are over, our dreams are carried on by the next generation. So we look forward to hearing this song and the other songs that Katie has written and will be performing with Steve today. Please give them a warm welcome up here. My grandmother was very proud of um, Ridgely, and she talked about him a lot, and it was only in the last few years that I came to um, pay more attention to his writing, and while I remember her reading me his poems um, as a young child, it was hard to really understand what he was talking about, and now it seems so clear. Um, so I set two of his poems to music, both of which are on my CD, which Steve produced. Um, if it sounds good, it's because Steve made it sound good. <laughs> which he loves when I say. Um, and I, Ridgely's poems are very lyrical, a lot of them, and so when I think about writing the music for them, I think less about me putting music on them and more about trying to listen well, and I hope that I did. Um, also, when I was preparing for today, I realized that the two poems that I wrote for his descendants, my father and my grandmother, also share similar themes, so I wanted to share those today, too. Um, the first one is Jean Singing, and this is a poem that Ridgely wrote for my grandmother when she was about two years old. Um, the music found me when I was um, getting dressed to go see my grandfather a couple of years after my grandmother died. And I was getting dressed, and a little melody came in my head. And I thought, oh, that sounds kind of like a lullaby. And so I was kind of putting words into it. And um, I was running late, and I went downstairs to leave. And I saw a few months before I'd asked my uncle to leave a copy of the poem for me. It, it was a bit before the internet had so much about him, and I couldn't find the poem. And so he had done that, and I picked the poem up on my way out the door, and as I'm Drive, my husband's driving, and I thought, I wonder if the words match this poem. That would be interesting. And, and I sang the words of the poem with this melody, and it, was, it matched exactly. I didn't have to change anything. So I guess that was the easiest song I ever wrote. Um, so I, I always thought of it as a poem that, um, that Ridgely was seeing his uh, niece singing in the garden, and he was imagining when he would die how he would feel. And, um, now I think of it more as her singing 
to my grandfather after she died. So this is Jean singing. Lavender's blue in the garden, lavender's bright. When I am blind, my beloved, you shall have sight. I shall be dust in the garden, deep from the storm. You shall be shining still, then you shall be warm. When I am hidden in shadow under the years, call to me, tell me of all things here among tears. I shall remember the glory filling this place. Firebird calling through the rainbow, lift up your face. I shall remember how beauty over death, over birth, bridges a streaming music here on the earth. Only if wounds and the sorrow made by men's hands Still shall out deepen the waters, darken the lands Even though you should recall me then with your gleam I shall remember and turn me back to my dream. Thank you. You can imagine how surprised I was when I <laughs> read these words. Um, never having thought of them as a song, they certainly were then. Um, I remember sitting with my grandmother while she read that when I was very little, and she said, my favorite line is the firebird calling through the rainbow, lift up your face. Um, there are copies of the poem back there, actually. I have the, um, the original that he hand wrote um, in 1918, I think it was. So it's interesting to see that. He actually changed some words in the last verse a few times in two different publications and in that. So um, there are alternate endings. <laughs> Um, the next song I want to sing is uh, one that I wrote for my grandparents. I wrote it the night that my grandfather had a stroke, and he was either 99 or 100 when he had the stroke, and I was so struck by the fact that I was still so much not ready to say goodbye to him. Um, so that phrase stuck with me, and I thought, oh, I don't want to write a sad song about my grandfather dying. And um, so I thought I would write um, my version of what their first date might have been like. Uh, my grandfather said that he knew he would marry my grandmother within the first couple of dates. And they met in June and got married in August and were just madly in love for their whole lives. So this is how I imagined their first date going. When he thinks of heaven, he pictures her blue eyes And for those curls he'd walk a thousand miles The dance is over, the night draws to a close 
And then she asks him to walk her the long way home. And he says, I could hold your hand forever. And I could walk with you all night. The stars are fading and the sun's about to rise. But I'm not ready to say goodbye. From moonlit walk into front porch light They thank each other for a lovely night Her lavender perfume, he knows that's what he'd miss And so he holds her gently for one soft kiss and he says, I could hold your hand forever. And I could walk with you all night. The stars are fading and the sun's about to rise. But I'm not ready to say goodbye. Finds her key, turns the porch light off A spring in his step down the long brick walk He turns to see her bedroom light go on She opens the window He holds his breath as she begins to talk and she says, I could hold your hand forever And I could walk with you all night The stars are fading and the sun's about to rise But I'm not ready to say goodbye I'm not ready I'm not ready I'm not ready To say goodbye Thank you I just love thinking about them. They're such an amazing couple. Um, the next song I want to sing is Even Song. This song, my, my great aunt, uh, Catchy, who I adore, um, asked me to write for her memorial. And keeping in mind that Catchy is about 80 and very healthy. <laughs> I guess she's a planner. Um, so I, I sang this the song I just played at my grandfather's memorial, and then I, I played Jean singing for her later, and she said, oh, I, I have one that I love. Well, you set it to music, and I said, I know just which one you're talking about, and I was right. Um, this song is really about how when we die, we don't need to grieve, that we, all of our dreams, anything that we feel like we didn't accomplish gets carried on to the next generation. And um, One biographer once referred to Ridgely as having been born somewhere between heaven and Xenia, Ohio. Um, <laughs> And I think it was, he must have had this sort of otherworldly quality about him, um, that he really saw the connection between heaven and earth and between the past and the present and really wasn't afraid of that or, or bothered by that and, and really embraced it. And I think that's what Catchy really liked about the song. So this is Even Song. Mm -hmm. 
Beauty calls and gives no warning. Shadows rise and wander on the day. In the twilight, in the quiet evening, we shall rise and smile and go away. Under the flaming leaves Freezes the sky, it is the season Grieves not you, not I All our springtimes, all our summers We have kept the longing warm within Now we leave the aftercomers To attain the dreams we did not win Under the flaming leaves Freezes the sky, it is the season Grieves not you not I. Oh, we have wakened sweet and had our birth, and that's the end of earth. And we have toiled and smiled and kept the light, and that's the end of night. Uh, this next song is one that I wrote for my dad. Uh, it was the first song I wrote. And I was in California, and I went to a house concert. I just started learning to play the guitar, and I went to a house concert by a songwriter named Amy McLean out there, and asked her how she wrote songs. I was fascinated by the process. And she said, just pick a moment. Pick a moment that meant something to you, and write the whole song about that moment. And the moment that immediately came to me was a night in the Adirondack Mountains, and my family was camping. And I don't know if you've ever been to the Adirondacks, but there's no light pollution. It's just dark at night. <clears throat> and we stayed in a camp, which is the Adirondack word for a cabin, on a lake. And um, one night, we were sleeping in this lean-to, my whole extended family <laughs> in this big lean-to. And my grandfather, my father woke me up very quietly and, shh, come down with me. And I was 13, and so of course I thought something dramatic was happening. He was stealing me and we were gonna go on an adventure. And, and so I follow him down to the dock and, and he said, sit down. And I sat down and he said, now wait. And I sat and waited and it was one of those nights where the, the lake was just like glass. And as I sat there, every single star appeared that was in the sky. Um, and when I was thinking about today, I thought the connection between the heaven and earth, and this is really what, um, what Ridgely Torrance was writing about. So I wanted to share this song with you too. Warm my hands up. <coughs> this is called Reflection. Midnight. Lakeside You woke me in silence And led me down Miles up Stars shine Down from the heavens Without a sound There was a brilliant light Piercing the velvet sky you named constellations perfectly. You seemed so wise. We feel no breeze. The lake spilling black ink on the ground. Then one by one each star breaks the surface the world upside down a million points of light 
between the earth and sky makes no difference who you are you wish upon a star to silence and found you downstairs you saw only clouds there but I went to the window and turned you around and said it was a peaceful night between the earth and sky then the dawn broke across the trees and stole the light until the dawn broke across the trees it was a perfect night thank you thank you okay um so very quickly i have another one um this one i wrote for my mom and it's it's not really connected to Ridgely, but um, it is in the sense that I, these moments, these little moments to capture, and my, I wrote this song for my dad, and then I felt like I needed to write one for my mom and realized that um, she had some pretty magical moments, too. They were just magical in a much more simple way. So this is mom's song. Oops. Do you remember the time when you taught me how to make butter by shaking a jar? And how at dusk on a Saturday you'd call me, won't you come home, you know it's getting dark. You held me close, you held me tight. You said, now hush, little baby, you know it's gonna be all right. And you were hoping it could stay forever that way. You'd always make my favorite meals. The best was popcorn for dinner on a Friday night. Comfort food for your little girl Whose best friend always seemed to be picking a fight You held me close, I held on tight You said, now come on honey, you know it's gonna be alright But I was thinking it would stay Forever that way And then I grew up way too fast Those mother-daughter moments weren't built to last out on my own Couldn't sit still But you've always been there And I know you always will Now it's my first day as a mom And thank God you're standing here right by my side And as I meet my little girl You hold me while I hold her And we all cry I'll hold her close, I'll hold her tight I'll tell her, hush, little baby, I know it's gonna be all right. And I wish that it could stay forever this way. Thank you very much.
Dreaming dreams, dreaming, vivid and real seeming. But I know I am dreaming. Chelsea and I ate waffles with coffee ice cream on the side. So satisfying, but I couldn't taste it, I was dreaming. Then a young woman from Pomperug High caught a fish much larger than I. So many bobbers on the ocean surface fishing for items that served no purpose. Then back to the waffles, fishing accomplished. Chelsea had to call her mother. This meal was exciting and sharing felt urgent. Wait, I'm awake now and the bathroom light wobbles. My mind goes around the corner to make a shadow of the ghost. After all, I was just dreaming. With smoothness, I am settled exactly where I am, lying in bed, wondering mine snuggled back in my head. When a woman thing came into the room, looming, floating, as dark as ether, without darkness or doom. My chest felt heavy, my body enclosed, in a place of a dimension I have never before known. It's a woman, she is young, no body, no face, no hair, no, sh no shape, no hair, but a presence from a dream, from the dead, from the living. Without transition on reflecting who or what she was, I was back to dreaming, dreaming dreams, dreamies, dreams, vivid and real seeming. Peach and